today is Wednesday, June 23rd, and in today's talk, I'm going to answer a question that I've received 10,000 times from homeschooling parents over the years, but I've never answered correctly because I've never understood what they were asking me until this morning. This morning, a homeschooling mother with a bunch of young children contacted us on chat. My wife took the chat, but I was was monitoring the chat and paying attention to the conversation. And as I followed the conversation, I realized what she meant by the question she asked and how I had wrongly understood it. For all these years, the question that this mother asked was, how much time does this curriculum require? How much time does this curriculum require? And I'll be honest, I've wrongly understood this question in the past, and when I've received it, I've kind of rolled my eyes at parents because what I thought that they were asking was how much time are we going to have to spend on homeschooling activity as a family if we use your curriculum? I thought that they were asking how much time they would need to spend each day to use our curriculum as if that was the principle by which they were selecting one curriculum over another. Because I've heard stories from homeschool families boasting about how they use Seton and they start their homeschooling at nine and they're finished by lunchtime. I've heard that story. And so any time that I heard someone ask this question... I thought of it in that context as if they were asking me if this is a program that they can get done really quickly every day because they don't want to spend much time studying. They have other things to do. And that's why I've always responded to it as I have. But after seeing this conversation this morning between my wife and this homeschooling mother... I realized that that's not what the parents were necessarily asking, and I may have answered it wrongly all these years. So first of all, if you have ever sought to ask this question, and you received something of a rough response from me, I want to apologize because I believe I've misunderstood this question and that because of the normal homeschool culture, the question is poorly articulated by parents and that's what caused some of my confusion. So in this talk, I'd like to answer this question rightly and in detail and I invite you to Listen along, and after I've finished, follow up with any questions or comments that you might have that apply to your specific circumstances. So, what I understand now is that when parents write to me and ask, how much time does this curriculum, the Classical Liberal Arts Academy curriculum, require, they're not asking, how much time do they need to spend studying every day? Or how much work do the children need to do? At least I hope they're not asking that question. The Classical Liberal Arts Academy provides students with access to the one and only classical Catholic curriculum that was studied and taught by saints and wise men throughout history. It's a study that requires all of our attention, all of our effort, 
all day, every day, for our entire lives. And that's why I would laugh at the question. And you can understand my response based on what I thought parents were asking me. What we teach in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy is not an artificial K-12 school curriculum. Our curriculum is not an artificial school curriculum. Our curriculum is the real course of studies that anyone seeking wisdom pursues with all their might, all day, every day, for their entire lives. And so, as far as how much time students should spend studying, the answer would be all of it. They should spend all of their time studying our curriculum. Not just when they're 8 or 12 or 18 years old, but for their whole lives. And my dream is that one day our students will understand that And their studies will just continue, even if they go to college, start careers, start families. They'll just continue the studies that they started when they were younger and continue them for the rest of their lives. That's my dream in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. Now the question I realize that parents are asking is is actually this. How much time do parents need to prepare lessons, to plan lessons and prepare for daily studies in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy? The question that parents are actually asking is, how much preparation time is needed by parents who will be using the Classical Liberal Arts Academy? That's the question that parents have intended to ask me, but they haven't articulated it clearly, and I haven't answered it correctly. Again, the question that parents are trying to ask me is how much time is needed for the parents to prepare the lessons for students in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. And there's a number of reasons why this should be a concern for Catholic parents. Number one, it's sort of an axiom of education that you cannot give what you do not have. And so right off the bat, parents realize that they don't know Latin, they don't know Greek, they don't know classical reasoning, they don't know moral philosophy. They may have not studied sacred scripture. And so, how can they even consider enrolling their children in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy when this curriculum is something they're completely unfamiliar with? And so, I can only imagine... You know, as I think of it from this perspective, I can only imagine how impossible this must appear to parents based on what other homeschool programs do. And this is the problem. Parents coming into the Classical Liberal Arts Academy are familiar with all of these other homeschool curriculum programs, but I'm not. I've never used another homeschool program. I've, I've looked at them. When my wife was first starting to homeschool, I was a classroom teacher. We wanted to homeschool, and we were considering just using an available homeschool curriculum. But as we started to look through them, I just said, they're all junk. And what they ask my wife to do as a homeschooling mother is simply not reasonable. The problem with homeschool programs is that they, they really aren't curricula. 
They use the word curriculum, but they aren't curricula. What they really are, are simply bundles of books and resources that are arranged into groups that are considered appropriate for the K-12 grade levels. The K-12 grade level system itself is not a curriculum. It's just a way of organizing students in a large school community. And this is the first major problem with homeschooling that I talk about all the time. The K-12 system is not a curriculum. There's no such thing as first grade, second grade, third grade. Those are just artificial groups created to organize students in a public school. That's where these grade levels come from. There's no such thing as a K-12 curriculum. The K-12 system is a method for organizing students in schools based on their age. If we are not doing that, if we're not organizing large groups of students into classes based on their age, then it makes no sense for us to even talk with the language of the K-12 grade system. What the homeschool publishers have done is just lazily bundled books together or prepared their own books to sell in these categories to homeschool families who are familiar with nothing other than the K-12 school system. So if I look at the Seton homeschool curriculum, I just find a K-12 curriculum, or I I have to stop saying curriculum because it's not a curriculum. I see a a K-12 category system for bundles of books. And so if you're a homeschooling parent and you get a, a Seton catalog, you say, okay, well, Tommy is eight years old, so so I need the second grade package for Tommy, and Mary is 12, so I need the sixth grade package for Mary, and let's see, that costs this and this, so I get these, these 59 books are going to be mailed to us, and we call this a curriculum, but this is, this is not a curriculum. The same thing is done in other programs. I'm, I'm familiar that with uh, Catholic Heritage Curriculum, for example. They advertise that their curriculum is free. But what they mean is that what they publish are lesson plans for parents. They, they publish lesson plans as if parents are classroom teachers. And they publish lesson plans, and those lesson plans are free, but parents have to buy all of the books required for those lesson plans. And the books are just, as I said, they're just bundles of resources that are grouped into these artificial categories based on the K-12 system of the public school system. But this isn't a curriculum at all. This is just a way of categorizing or bundling books to sell to the homeschool market. And because the parents don't know anything other than this K-12 school system, it's the only way that they can even think about teaching their children And the homeschool programs, instead of teaching the parents how to think rightly and actually providing a historical solution for Catholic parents, just feeds this ignorant homeschool market. And when I say ignorant, I mean that in in an innocent way. I mean that they just don't know another option. They don't know. 
instead of teaching them what they should do, which I suppose these homeschool programs themselves don't know, they just serve the current understanding. And it's convenient because, goodness, it guarantees that parents have to buy whole new bundles of books every single year. It's a, I mean, it's beautiful for book sales. Every single summer, the homeschool programs can know that the parents are going to have to buy a whole new batch of books for all the children. What a, what a wonderful business plan that is. The problem is it has absolutely nothing to do with homeschooling, should never be practiced by homeschool parents, and it's not a curriculum. It's just a book-selling system. So when parents come to the Classical Liberal Arts Academy and they're familiar with what the other homeschool programs do, that they're all arranged based on the K-12 grade system of the public schools, they all sell these bundles, boxes of books and DVDs and all this workbook junk that's just labeled with some grade level. And then they stick in these boxes lesson plans that parents are supposed to follow to prepare all the lessons that explain to them how this collection of books is to actually be used every day. And they come into the Classical Liberal Arts Academy with that understanding that that's how homeschooling works, that mom basically replaces 10 school teachers and attempts to administer a K-12 education at home across 10 different subjects in four different grade levels And all she has to do is follow the lesson plans, which tell her how to do all this. And it takes an incredible amount of time. And really, if we're honest, the mothers never do it. They never do it all. And they just consider that to be normal. So not only are these homeschool programs bad in the sense that they are simply making marketing use of the K-12 public school system and turning it into a list of categories for book selling, but they're providing parents, homeschool parents, with a plan that really is no plan, that can never be carried out effectively. And then the homeschool community just reacts to it by saying, oh, well, you know, we can't be perfect. We just try to do our best rather than acknowledging that this plan is not practicable. This plan doesn't work. I was able to see that because as a school teacher, I could see what the homeschool programs were selling to my wife or trying to sell to my wife as a homeschool mother. They were trying to sell her grade levels of books with lesson plans and she was supposed to take all of this stuff and turn it all into daily lessons and activities for the kids. And I told her, I said, there's no way that you're ever going to do that. There's no way you're going to do that. I love my wife, but there's no way that a homeschool mother is going to replace 20 teachers. The K-12 school system is allowed to do what it does, because of government funding. If you think about, if you went to a public school, if you just think about how the school is arranged, there's 12 grade levels. So from, let's go from first grade to 12th grade. In first grade, you have a homeroom teacher. She's your main teacher. She's like your mom in first grade. And she can teach the English lessons and she can teach the the math lessons, and maybe you have some, you know, what they call science or social studies and all this. And the homeschooling, te- the, the, uh, the homeroom teacher 
in the early elementary levels can, can be the language arts and math and social studies teacher. And then that first grade teacher may bring the class down the hall to the art teacher or to the music teacher, and they'll go to the gym teacher for gym class. But the, the first grade teacher can cover the core curriculum herself, but there are still other experts there in other individual subjects. And that continues through second grade, third grade, fourth grade. And then things start to get more complicated because the studies start to get a little more specific. One teacher, especially a public school teacher, can no longer teach multiple subjects. So students move from class to class with different full-time teachers dedicated to those specific subjects. Not only are teachers dedicated to specific subjects, but teachers are dedicated to specific grade levels of specific subjects. So a teacher will teach ninth grade science, or a teacher will teach 11th grade English. And that's all that those teachers do. Full-time workers who teach one subject at one grade level in a modern school. And the only reason that this is possible is because of the unlimited supply of state funding for these schools. Private schools stupidly follow this same model and they, they can't stay in existence. They either have to charge $20,000 a year in tuition, and that's just for day school attendance, or they have to downgrade the curriculum so much that barely anything is being taught, or teachers are being overworked, and there's just turnover every single year. The private schools that I worked in, the biggest problem was turnover. As a teacher, I saw Every August, we would start meeting for our, our preparatory teacher meeting, faculty meetings, and half of, the, half of the faculty would be new every single year. And of that, a quarter of the faculty would probably not even make it past their first year. And that's the normal experience in private schools. The turnover, I think the turnover is close to 33% meaning the faculty changes every single year because it's just, it's just not realistic. It's not practicable, especially for a private school. And again, I was teaching in the wealthy private schools. I was teaching in the private schools where the tuition was $18,000 a year. We had it good. I've also taught my first job was in a private school. It was a good school, but, the, but it was a very small school. And tuition was only two or three thousand dollars a year, and there might have been two or three teachers who were really powering the whole school. It was it was a K to twelve school, but really there was a, a woman who taught kindergarten who was extraordinary. The first grade teacher was another extraordinary teacher, and then you just had this kind of constant turnover among teachers from from grades two through seven. And then in eighth grade, we had a couple of upper school teachers, myself, a philosophy teacher who was a Princeton grad, and a couple of others who really directed the whole upper school program. So we had highly skilled and hardworking Christian teachers at the upper school level, but the middle of the curriculum was just really junk constant turnover, young female teachers who were getting married, getting pregnant, leaving, coming back in and out of work. Those middle years were terrible and unstable with constant faculty change. And that's the normal experience in these schools. The K-12 system only works where you can pay every single specialist $50,000 a year with full benefits to teach one subject 
at one grade level and the kids move from class to class benefiting in this system. You know, there are other problems with the public school system, but the investment in teachers and experts and specialists is not the problem of the public school system. There are other problems. But to take that school model and then recommend it to homeschool parents, and let's be honest, in almost all homeschools, we're not even talking about homeschool parents in the plural. We're talking about homeschool parent in the singular because normally dad's at work as he should be and it's mom who's managing the homeschool. So to even suggest that this mother who's responsible for bearing children, nursing babies, making meals, cleaning the house, on and her normal duties as a mother and wife is now going to be asked to be an English teacher and math teacher and science teacher and social studies teacher and foreign language teacher and gym teacher at every different grade level, providing different lessons and content for every single child in all different subjects, in all different grades, if you can't see that that is not a serious plan for homeschooling, then you're just not paying attention or you're not honest. There's no way that a mother is going to do that work. No way. That, the idea of the K-12 homeschool curriculum is just a way to sell books. And once those books are sold, everything is put onto the parents. And so, so what happens is the parents are now judged by whether or not they make it work. They're judged for whether or not they make this impossible system work. And you have these homeschool parents undertaking an impossible task and, and being told that this, th- this plan can actually work and if it fails, it's just because they're not doing a good enough job. When the reality is, is that this plan is no plan at all. It's actually impossible. But the books are sold, the boxes are shipped to the parent, and then the parent, this homeschooling mother believes that she's supposed to carry out this education. She assumes that other mothers everywhere are succeeding in this work, when the reality is no one is able to get this work done. Or, or the curriculum materials are dumbed down so much that mothers can check all the boxes for all the children at all the grade levels in all the subjects and then imagine that they're actually getting real academic work done when all that they've done is accepted a lower and lower and lower standard so that they could finally check the boxes for their grade levels for their homeschool program. And they're not actually achieving the true goals of Christian education at all. So having said all that, when parents come to the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, they're coming to the academy as these discouraged, overwhelmed, exhausted, frustrated mothers and they're looking for some solution. But really, all they're looking for is just another program that might be easier, that might require less of the mother, that might lower the standard further, that might allow them to actually accomplish something because what they're doing 
is not working or they know that the standards that they're pursuing in their existing homeschool curriculum are not the kind of things that Christians ever did in the past. And so when they come to the Classical Liberal Arts Academy and they ask me, how much time does this curriculum take? What they're really asking is, is it possible for me to actually carry out your curriculum? Or is it just another one of these impossible K-12 homeschool programs that ask a mother to replace 30 full-time specialists in a public school? And I've never understood the real question until this morning. The good news is that the answer to that question is not just another option for the same failing approach to homeschooling. The answer in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy is not just another sales pitch to have parents convert from one box of books to a different box of books. In the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, we don't just copy and paste the public school curriculum, dress it up and brand it for our own benefit, and then market it to the frustrated, exhausted homeschool community, we actually solve the problems of Christian education and offer parents a real solution. First of all, in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, we don't follow the K-12 system. We don't ask parents to be public school teachers at home teaching 10 different subjects across five different grade levels every day. In the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, there are no lesson plans for parents. In the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, we don't ask parents to do any preparation of daily lessons or activities. In the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, we don't ask parents to be teachers at all. As I said at the beginning of this talk, you cannot give what you don't have. If you desire to give your children the best possible Catholic education, the education that was enjoyed by saints and wise men throughout history, I can guarantee that you yourself don't have that education to give. And so you have two options. You can find a way to get that education for your children or you can just go to one of the dum dum programs and follow the public school curriculum and imagine that because there's pictures of the Virgin Mary on the books that you're actually doing something that relates to the Catholic faith and Catholic education. I would hope that after 30 years of the increasing popularity of Catholic homeschooling, that Catholic parents would finally start to realize that the homeschool programs that exploited the problems in modern education and just quickly rushed into building these massive book-selling businesses, rather than actually addressing the problems, have produced no fruit and don't deserve to be supported any longer. To have the homeschool publishers tell the parents that if anything doesn't work, it's because they're not doing their job. It's just, it's, it's like, the, it's like the, the health and wealth evangelists on television. They promise to heal everybody and make everybody wealthy, but if it doesn't work, they just tell you that you don't have enough faith. So yes, they're a healer and, and they are these wise business advisors who, who lead everyone to health and prosperity. But when they fail, it's never their fault. It's always 
the sick and poor people's fault that they didn't become healthy and wealthy because they just don't have enough faith. And it's that same, that same scam that works in the homeschooling market. The, the homeschool programs offer a curriculum that either doesn't come anywhere close to Christian standards of education or asks parents to do things that are impossible and then pretends that something's wrong with the parents when the plan doesn't work. And, and Christian parents just keep submitting themselves to this year after year after year imagining that there's just something wrong with their kids or there's something wrong with them or their husband doesn't help enough or the church is terrible, the priests don't help enough, the bishops are unfaithful, they don't help enough, the Pope doesn't do anything to help. And they just pass the blame around instead of saying, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe the problem is actually the homeschool program. Maybe the problem is that this plan, quote-unquote, curriculum that they're selling to us is not even realistic. And instead of blaming myself as a homeschooling mother, working my butt off, sacrificing everything to give my kids a good education and always being told that I'm not doing enough, maybe the problem is that this plan is actually not a plan. It would be nice if Catholic homeschool parents would be willing to think like that. The other danger in the homeschooling community is that there are so many fakers. There are so many fakers who show up at the local homeschool mother's meeting with the happy face on, who at home are miserable, and who pretend to be doing things. We see, if you go on social media, you'll see all the homeschool mothers posting the pictures of their homeschool rooms, all their homeschool supplies. You'll always notice that all the books are brand new. The the homeschool room looks like it was just set up and painted for the first time. All the children are young. We're talking about kindergarten, first grade children getting started. Everything is new, everything is smiley, everything is fresh. And this is the image of homeschooling. Like everyone is thriving and achieving amazing things. And the reality is that it's not so at all. You rarely see end of the year pictures unless it's apparent boasting that they've checked all the boxes for their dumbed down grade level program. As if, as if that's an actual achievement and not just completely artificial. What does it even mean? What does it mean if a child says he completed third grade? Objectively speaking, what does that even mean? What's anyone even talking about? Does anyone even ask a second question like, what did you actually study? What subjects have you actually learned? What sources have you actually mastered? We just hear, oh, Tommy finished third grade and we're all trained to applaud as if that means something. Or, oh, Mary got her high school diploma. Yay, congratulations, Mary. We have no idea what that actually means. It means something totally different in 2021 than it did in 1981 or in 1941. It means something totally different from one school to another, from one town to another, from one family to another. We all know that there's no actual standard. There's no objective curriculum that's being pursued and completed. But we're all trained, like the emperor's new clothes, we're all trained to applaud and celebrate as if this scam of a system is some kind of real life achievement. And all that the schools do is just lower the standards year by year. 
The same diploma, same paper, same ceremony, inferior curriculum, year by year. Catholic parents need to stop imagining that everything is working fine and they are just some kind of reject that can't get anything done. That's false. If you find that what a homeschool program asks you to do doesn't satisfy real standards of Christian education or asks you to do things that are impossible, that cannot possibly be done in a normal mother's daily schedule, then you have to realize that that is not a Christian curriculum at all. It's not a program of study or a study plan at all. It's just a business. It's just selling you books, treating you like a niche market that needs supplies. It knows what you're looking for. It knows that you don't know anything better, anything beyond the public school curriculum, but you want something that is quote-unquote Catholic. Well, how do we make it Catholic? We just slap pictures of saints. Maybe a picture of a tabernacle or a church or the Virgin Mary is great to use on books because that's really Catholic. Or a certain saint who's sort of a, a symbol, maybe Pope Pius X because we know, we know how he, what he signifies to all of the quote-unquote traditional Catholics so we can put him on the cover and maybe a picture of a pre-Vatican II mass. We'll put that on the book and say, there, this is a traditional Catholic textbook. Even though it's the same exact thing as a modern school book serving the same exact thing as the modern public school curriculum with no research, no historical precedence, no support from any wise men or doctors of the church, no actual tradition or history in Christian education, just complete modern junk, repackaged, rebranded, and sold to the suckers in the homeschool market who don't ask a single question. They literally judge their books by their covers. Literally. Don't judge a book by its cover. You've heard that, of of course. Homeschool families do exactly that. And the publishers know it. It's so easy to see the marketing schemes used by these publishers. They know exactly what the homeschool parents want to see. They know they're never going to ask a critical question. They're never going to ask for any historical proof or support for the claims that are made in the catalogs. They're never going to read the articles critically. All that they need is to know this box of books satisfies the third grade requirements. And look, it has Catholic pictures on every page. I've had homeschool parents ask me if our lessons have colorful pictures, as if that was a criterion for judging a curriculum. Colorful pictures. And you can say, I don't believe it's that bad. And I can tell you, it's that bad. Catholic parents, homeschooling parents, first of all, are nervous about homeschooling. I can say this because I've, I've experienced this myself as a parent. It's an incredible undertaking. It's extremely difficult. It's extremely complicated. You, you love these children. You want to please God and, and glorify God. You want to lead these children to know, love, and serve God. And you realize this task of educating my children 
is extremely difficult. And as a, as a, as a good person, you doubt yourself. As a good person, you exaggerate all your faults because that's what good people do because they're humble. They exaggerate their faults. You look upon all of your faults as disqualifications and you're always second-guessing yourself. And the reason you're doing that is because you're a good person. You're honest. You're humble. You, you realize that the task you're undertaking is very, very great and you don't believe that you're worthy. You don't believe that you're qualified to lead your children to the pursuit of wisdom or, or holiness in the Catholic faith. You know that you're not qualified for that. St. Paul in sacred scripture said, none of us are qualified for the work that God asks us to do. And so there's always this uncertainty and self-doubting in homeschool. And this, the danger of this is that it leads to an excessive timidity where Catholic homeschool parents, even when their gut is telling them that something's wrong, they're afraid to raise a hand or ask a question. They're afraid to disagree. They're afraid to ask for proof. And we have a homeschool community that's, remember I I mentioned the fakers in the homeschool community. They're the people who always act like everything's going fine. What they do, they're they're usually interested more in social activity. They're interested in, in creating some kind of social life for themselves. And and their homeschool activity, like they choose the curriculum because that's what the other mothers are using. And if I if I enroll my children in Mother of Divine Grace, then it's cool because I get to go hang out with all the other moms who use Mother of Divine Grace. And, and the, the, the curriculum for the children's education is being chosen based on the social benefits that it brings to mom. Because it gets her into a, a better crowd of women to hang out with. And that's the criterion for the homeschool curriculum. And so then you get into the homeschool group and now you've got this social club that's no longer even about real Catholic education. Now it's about being a part of the community, being approved by the other members of the group, doing what the leader does and says. And what, what happens when you feel like it's not working or you feel like more is needed, or you feel like what's being said is not really true. Can you ask for proof? Can you object? Can you say, I really don't think that this is right. I think what we should do is X, Y, Z. The whole point of choosing that curriculum was to become a member of the club. So what's the point of objecting? What's the point of isolating yourself or asking the question? If you do so, you're just going to be branded as divisive or uncharitable because you question something that someone else says. Or when you, if you were to ask for proof, that would make that person feel uncomfortable in front of the other women. And to do that is uncharitable. And so you need to just shut your mouth and be quiet and do what everyone else does. And many homeschool parents just accept that. They accept the fact that you're not supposed to ask questions. You're not supposed to ask for proof. You're not supposed to ask a question that makes somebody else uncomfortable because they don't have the answer. Or because you already know that there's no answer. And so they'll say, why would you ask that question except to be a jerk? except to be mean, except to make this, this good Catholic woman feel embarrassed. And the right answer should be, I'm trying to figure out what I should be teaching my children. I'm not concerned about this group. This woman has stepped up and presented herself as a teacher and an authority, and teachers deserve stricter judgment as Scripture teaches. Yes, if a woman comes to me in the, in the 
in the person of a homeschool mother and asks me questions about education. I'm careful to answer her questions. I don't expect her to know these things. She doesn't claim to be a teacher. She's not pretending to be an expert. She's asking for help. If I'm asked a question by a homeschool mother, I'm going to try to answer that question and provide her with evidence that allows her to have confidence, to have certainty that what I say to her and what she then goes and does is actually true and wise. If someone, however, presents themselves as an expert, claims to have expertise, claims to have some kind of authority, claims to be a teacher, my response to her will not be as a woman or as a Catholic or as a mother, but my response to her will be as to an expert or a teacher. And yet when such a person is questioned or challenged as an expert or as a teacher, which she claims when it's time to try to make money, when she's called out as an expert or a teacher, when it's time to give proof, all of a sudden she wants to switch masks and put the innocent Catholic mother mask on and make it look like she's being bullied by some mean guy where I'm asking a question, and Catholic parents should be asking questions not to the nice Catholic woman or to the Catholic mother. That's irrelevant. We're asking questions to the expert, the self-proclaimed teacher, who should have these answers and should be eager to provide them because she's an expert and a teacher And that's what experts and teachers do. They give counsel because they have expertise. They can answer questions because they have studied the master sources, the authoritative sources, and know the right answers and can show people where those answers can be found. But what we find in homeschool circles is that you're not allowed to ask for proof. You're not allowed to raise critical questions. You just have to follow in line and understand that if it's not working, you need to keep paying, keep buying, and just understand that, hey, we're not perfect, we just do as much as we can. Not that this program doesn't work. So, getting back to the original question. How much time is needed to prepare as a parent? The answer is no time. And the reason why is because in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, we're not selling just collections of books to parents, throwing lesson plans at them and saying, go figure it out and make it work. Just make sure you buy all your supplies from us. We, we are the teachers. We are the experts. We provide proof for the program that we teach. We provide proof for the courses that we teach. We teach from master texts and sources that have been used throughout history by wise men and saints. And we can, pr- we can provide all the proof for anything that we say anytime you request it. If you say, why, does, why should my study, son study this particular Latin grammar textbook? What about the ones that all the other homeschool programs are using? What about lingua latina, for example? That's popular in homeschool circles. What about, uh, I think there's Henley's Latin grammar. What about that one? I saw that advertised in this homeschool catalog. Well, our answer is, who do you think the masters of Latin teaching would be? Where do you think we would find the masters, the greatest Latin teachers? Where are they? I would think that they were probably the Catholic schoolmasters teaching in the, in the generation where Latin was still in active use in society and in the church. Don't you think that those Latin schoolmasters are the masters 
of this instruction? Let's go back and see what they taught. Let's go back and see what books they used. Let's go back and see what methods they used. Because they weren't just teaching some silly foreign language class tacked on to a modern curriculum. They were teaching a language course that every one of their students needed to master and demonstrate in order to be ordained to the priesthood or in order to find a position in politics or to work in a university community. Their teaching was accountable to the strictest practical active standards of business, work, academics, ministry, and so on. They were the masters. And when we go back in history, we can see the exact textbooks they used, the methods that they used, and that's what we work to reproduce in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. It's not just our opinion. It's not just William Michael's way to study Latin. We're trying to restore those sources and practices that are recommended to us by the best Catholic teachers, by the wisest and most experienced men in history. You can ask for proof anytime. And I guarantee you that anything on our website, anything in our curriculum, is there for specific reasons that we can explain and provide proof for. We don't ask homeschool parents to pretend that they are either K-12 school teachers, which as I said is impossible, or that they are some kind of classical schoolmasters, which we know that they're not. And they don't need to be. And they shouldn't worry about being so. If a homeschooling parent wants to give their children the best possible education, they do not need to pretend that they need to be the teachers of that education. They have an important role to play, but it's not as a teacher. In the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, we are the teachers that can help parents give their children a true classical Catholic education. We can provide the instruction. We've already prepared the lessons. We're not just selling the books to parents and saying, hey, go figure it out. Here's some lesson plans you can follow. We've prepared all of the individual lessons for the children to use directly every day. The children access the lessons directly. Parents need to be parents. To give their children a true classical Catholic education, parents need to be parents, not teachers. Parents can be excellent parents in a classical Catholic homeschool education. What do the children need? The children need for the parents to provide them with access to experts and teachers who they can contact directly for specific help in their courses and lessons. Parents can provide that for their children. Children need parents to supervise their use of available technology. We can provide these children with so much if parents will just supervise them and not let them be tempted into misuse of computers or the internet, if parents will just supervise the children, we can give them access to incredible resources, resources that parents could never afford if they were in printed form. Our curriculum provides students with access to resources that would cost parents thousands and thousands of dollars if they were to buy books for these things. Plus, we present them to the students not just as books thrown on their desk, but in individual lessons where the lesson is broken down, tasks are given to be completed, assessments and assignments are provided, 
videos are provided to help explain the concepts and the lessons. We've already done the work of lesson planning because we are the teachers. You, the parent, are not the teacher of the homeschool. You're the homeschool administrator. You're the, you're the principal of the homeschool. The principal does not teach all of the classes. The principal finds competent specialists to teach the classes. We serve as those teachers. You serve as the parent and homeschool administrator. So in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, the answer to this question is, really, there is no time needed for our curriculum because parents do not need to prepare lessons. Parents are not asked to teach and execute a program of study that's impossible for them to do. We're not going to lower standards to make it possible for parents to play school teacher. And we're not going to ask parents unrealistically to teach a curriculum that they could never teach. We offer a real solution. And that's why when I'm asked the question, how much time does it take? I can't even think in, the, in, in terms of what the parents are asking because I would never ask parents to prepare lessons. Parents aren't required to prepare lessons in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. That's the whole point. The whole point of our website and curriculum is that we've already done all of that work for parents. The other homeschool programs don't do that work. They send parents books and then they send lesson plans that tell parents how to make those books work. But the actual work and expertise of preparing the lessons, we do that. We don't ask parents to do that. And if you're just accustomed to homeschooling working like that, where you just get sent a box of books and some suggestions for how to turn that into daily studies, you have to realize that you're just being taken advantage of. We don't ask parents to prepare any lessons. That's our job. We're the teachers. We don't ask parents to administer tests or grade assignments. That's our job. We're the teachers. Parents are not the teachers. We ask parents to supervise their children, to help their children keep a good daily schedule, to oversee their children's activities, make sure they're healthy, make sure that they're taking care of themselves, make sure they're growing and exercising, and and that they have a well-balanced daily routine. That's what parents are supposed to do. Mom has to prepare meals. There's laundry to be done. Babies need to be nursed and taken care of. Mom may be pregnant and needs to lay down. That's what parents do in homeschooling. They oversee the children in their studies. But parents parents need teachers and experts to help them with academic instruction, grading, and assessment. And in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, that's our job. That's not your job. So it takes no time for parents to use the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. What we do is we provide for every student who's enrolled in the academy, we provide a student page. And that student page is the place where we interact with the parents and the students. All three of us have a role to play, and, that, and that's carried out through the student page. On the student page, we list each course the student is enrolled in, and we have a link to the current lesson for that student in that course. So if a parent wants to know where the student is at, all he, ne- he or she needs to do is look at the student page and he'll see the courses listed and under each course he'll see the current lesson, where the student is at. The student, if it's 9 a.m. and it's time to start school, the parents determine what the school schedule is. So let's say first thing in the morning, 9 a.m., we have catechism 
the student will just open his student page, look where the catechism course is listed, see his current lesson listed, and click on that and go study his lesson. The lesson that the student sees has a checklist at the top which tells the student what he needs to do. The lesson will have videos or other resources to help the student, a lesson text that's to be studied, and then assessments and assignments to help the student demonstrate and develop his mastery. And when he completes the tasks for that lesson, he lets us know we update his student page with his new current lesson status, and he just continues at his own pace day by day. If he has a question about a lesson, he doesn't have to bother mom with that question. He can just click the live chat button and ask us, and we're available to to answer those questions with expertise. We know all the lessons. We know all the assessments. We're available almost 24 hours a day to help students if they ask questions, but they don't need to ask mom those questions. And mom doesn't need to think that she's being lazy if she tells the children, why don't you ask Mr. Michael, who's a full-time professional classicist that you have access to here in our home, why don't you ask him that question? Because he can, that's his job. He can help you with the answer. As for the parents, like I said, they can look at their child's student page to see where their children are at. They don't need to prepare any lesson plans or organize studies. And if parents have multiple children enrolled, we also provide a parent page which has links to every one of their children's student pages. So the parent, let's say mom gets up at 7.30 and she wants to get ready for the kids for homeschool, all she, and she just wants to look and see where everybody's at, she can just open up her parent page, click on each of the children's student pages one by one, and take a look at what they're currently working on. If, if mom would like to print lessons for children to study offline, she can do that, but that's not required. That's optional. So, for example, if you have a child that can't use the computer responsibly and you don't like leaving him online, or you can't supervise him today, then you could simply print out his lesson. So there may be some prep time just for something like that. But as far as organizing lessons, presenting the material, answering lesson questions, grading, that's our job. That's not your job as a mother. And the fact that you're doing that for other homeschooling programs is just ridiculous. In fact, you're probably not doing it because you can't get around to it all. So, there's no time needed to prepare for study in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. That's the whole point of what we do. We've already done all that work for parents. We present the lessons directly to the students with resources to teach them and explain them. And we're available, as I said, almost 24 hours a day to answer any questions that they have on live chat. They can just click the button, ask their question, and get an answer in a minute. None of that is asked of parents. And that's why I never even understood the question, because I really can't comprehend how parents could subject themselves to this idea that they're supposed to be their children's teachers preparing lessons, preparing daily activities, organizing all of the studies, grading the papers, that parents would even consider doing that, to me, is just ridiculous. And so when they asked me these questions, I I wasn't even able to comprehend what they were actually saying. And I think I answered them poorly because I thought they were asking how much time should the children study each day? And my answer was always, as much as they can. What kind of question is that? They should study as much as they can. If there's nothing better to do, they should study. All the courses are self-paced. The kids can move as quickly as they want if they study more 
Or if your family has other things to do, which may be perfectly fine and responsible, they may need to study at a slower pace. It doesn't matter. The lessons are available to them one by one to study at their own pace. There's nothing for mom to prepare. So, we're already over an hour. I hope that's a helpful answer once and for all to this question. How much time do families need for this curriculum? The answer is, parents don't need to prepare anything for the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. It's not a K-12 program. All the lessons are prepared one by one by full-time expert classical Catholic teachers. That's what we do. And so if you're killing yourself trying to get lessons prepared or if you're making excuses for all of the activities that you can't get to or you're accepting lower and lower standards so that you can check the boxes and feel good, you need to realize that you're being ripped off. You're not getting the help that you need as a homeschooling parent. You need to find a curriculum provider that offers expert instruction, live support for your students, and does the work of instruction for you, plans and prepares the lessons for you. And when you think that the Classical Liberal Arts Academy does this for prices that are lower than these other programs charge, you have to ask yourself, what in the world are we doing? Why are we paying thousands of dollars for boxes of books that we have to do the work for? It's ridiculous. It's a ripoff. And as soon as Catholic homeschool parents can wake up from this stupor, that they've been in, we're going to see these children be able to take off, not only in a program where they have help, but in a program that's an actual, real, classical, Catholic curriculum that can actually lead them to real intellectual achievement. So, I think I've made my point clear enough I'm sorry if that got rough at points, but I I can't be more emphatic that what people are being sold in the name of homeschooling, when I consider the prices, and I'm saying this as a former school teacher, when I consider the prices that homeschooling parents are paying to homeschool programs and what they're receiving in return for the amounts of money that they're spending. It's just incredible. I can't believe parents can fall for it. You're paying numbers, you're paying amounts of money that would allow your children to attend a local private school. You're getting into thousands of dollars. If you don't have... If you're paying thousands of dollars and you don't have live video instruction from an expert teacher, I'm not talking about some fresh out of college kid who's stuck in front of a camera to play teacher in a homeschool program. I'm talking expert, researcher, published writer who knows all the details. If you're not getting live tutoring and support from experts, you're throwing money to the wind. There's no way that any of the stuff that I see in homeschool circles is worth thousands of dollars a year for Catholic families, especially when mom is ultimately the one that has to do all the work and make it successful. If you're interested in learning more, about the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, the, the first step that you should take, of course, is <clears throat> just to browse our website, read the curriculum page, learn about the curriculum. You can click on the blog link and, and look through 
articles. You, you can click on the podcast link and look through other topics that I've talked about. But the first real step to take is to schedule a live, cons- a, a, a free consultation with me. We'll just chat on the Academy website and I'll just ask you some questions. What are your goals for homeschooling? Tell me about your children. Do they have any unique strengths or weakness or interests? What are their ages? What have they studied before? Um, Just to get to know your family and your children, you can ask any questions you have, anything about homeschooling in general or in classical Catholic studies in particular that you'd like some answers to. I'll take all the time you need to answer those questions. If I need more time, I'll just follow up by email or we can schedule a second chat. Um, you could, heck, you could, you could start a chat anytime you want if you just want to keep our discussion going. Uh, but most importantly, I can set up student pages and parent pages for your family and just let you get started for free so you can, you can see what I'm talking about, how simple it is, how easy it is, and, and that I'm not making this up when I say you don't need to prepare lessons as a homeschooling parent. We've already done all of that work for you in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. If you'd like to see it, get on the Academy website at classicalliberalarts.com and start one of the free consultations that you see advertised on the page there. You'll chat with me directly and we'll talk about all these things in detail. And like I said, we'll focus on your family's particular circumstances and help you to figure out how to get started and succeed in in doing what you want, which is to give your children a real classical Catholic education, the real education that the saints enjoyed. That's your goal as a Catholic, is it not? We can help you to actually do that, not play around with these silly homeschool programs, talking about first, second, third grade, high school diplomas. You know the saints didn't do that. You know that's all modern public school nonsense. That's part of the reason you're homeschooling in the first place. So let's fix it, and let's, let's set the standards where they need to be set, and let's work reasonably with a realistic plan to get this stuff done. I'm available for consultations every day. Just hit the button whenever you're ready. Just hit the chat box at the bottom of the website and we'll get to work. I hope that's helpful. I'd like to ask again before we wrap up, if you find these talks helpful, make sure you click subscribe on the YouTube channel. As I said in past talks, clicking that subscribe button provides feedback to YouTube that tells them that people are interested in our videos and that causes YouTube to then promote them a little more aggressively than they would if there's no reaction. So by subscribing, by commenting, even if it's simply saying, hey, thanks for the, thanks for the talk, um, any engagement from viewers or listeners, subscriptions and so on, shares, Those things all tell YouTube that people are interested in this topic. And and YouTube uses that feedback to then decide what videos and what sources to promote. So by subscribing, by sharing, by commenting, you actually can help to promote um, the message and these videos uh, on the feeds of other users. And that's really helpful for us. Um, So please take time to share subscribe, comment, and so on. I hope that's helpful. God bless your studies.